Welcome to Tuesdays with Gary. It's Tuesday, June the 2nd. And uh, in South Florida today, we've had quite a, a lot of rain and it's still coming down. Uh, but we're here as usual on Tuesday, 145, to share with you some real estate knowledge and to bring you some of the best people in real estate and specifically to talk about how we do real estate during the COVID environment. So I'm so happy today to have as my guest, Bobby Smith. Bobby is somebody I've known for about 15 years. Uh, we work together exclusively with regards to photography, and she knows how to get the picture. So without further ado, let me introduce Bobby Smith. Welcome, Bobby. Hi, Gary. How are you doing? I'm doing great. How are you doing today? Uh, it's good to be here. Thank you. Well, I'm so glad you're here. Uh, how are you handling the COVID? Are you, what's going on? Uh, I'm I'm doing okay. Um, I'm getting a lot of um, lock boxes and vacant properties, and realtors are minimizing their um, accompaniment to me. So, and we're getting it done because people have to see these pictures. So, have you, did you notice any change in your business uh, since COVID started, and and what's going on now, Bobby? Uh, yes. Um, in the beginning of the lockdown, probably around March 23rd or so, um, I did four jobs. Next day I did two, then I had a day off. Um, next day two, then one, and then a whole week and a half of absolutely nothing. Everyone was shutting down and absolutely no activity. Um, listings began to poke their heads up uh, probably around the second week of April. And... Um, and then they backed off for a little while. So things are getting back to normal. I'm doing about three to four jobs uh, a day now. My approach to business hasn't changed too much. I still take pictures pretty much the same way I always have. But and images have never been more important with all the- No, I can only imagine. Yeah, with all this technology, we can create experience that uh, portrays the reality of the listing, you know. So there's some lessons to be learned here for sure. And, and uh, you're certainly teaching me all the time about what's going on. So I've used you for, I don't know, 15 years for my real estate photography. I, I've seen the industry change. I've seen you change. I've, I've seen you continue to be educated, continue to grow. And uh, for the realtor that has not used your services or for the seller who needs to use your services, can you share with me how you're different? Keeps telling me that I'm muted here. Um, can you hear me, Gary? Yes, I can. I can. Okay. Um, why am I different? Um, it's my attitude. Um, I, I'm on your side. I'm on the realtor side. I want them to look good. I want to um, give them a sense of a teamwork. Um, uh, I want the property to look good, um, and I get a feel for the home when I first drive up. I'll, I'll look at the curb appeal. I'll look at um, what uh, the entrance is looking like, and subsequently throughout the whole house. I usually shy away from a tour of the house because I want to be fresh in every room. You know, um, I want to know what I feel at the doorway. Um, I also appreciate architecture, angles and the shades of light. Uh, I'll move some things around, but I'm not the housekeeper or the stager. And again, I, I usually send a preparation checklist to assist the uh, realtors and their sellers so that we can make it a more pleasant experience. Well, I think what I really like is uh, your whole approach to when you drive up to the property, you kind of get them a feeling, a first impression of what that house looks like and how we can best display it. And and I think that's to your credit because we're in the feeling business. Yes, we're buying houses and we're going to live in these houses, but how does the house make us feel? So I love that about you and being able to go in there. And, and I also love that you help me get my sellers prepared. Would you mind going over that one more time, how you prep your realtors and 
make sure that the house is ready when you arrive? Sure. Um, I give them, uh, I try to find out as much about the property as I can in the beginning through um, a phone call from the uh, realtors. I find out what size property it is. I find out if it is a, um, a single family home or a condo. I need to make sure that I can get access. Um, I send them a preparation list, letting them know about uh, boxes because there's always boxes around when people are moving. Um, the clutter, we don't live like we take pictures. We like everything at arm's length. Um, but those things need to be put away. Nobody wants to see somebody else's toothbrush. No, I, they don't want to see what kind of shampoo they're using. Um, the trash cans need to be removed. Every light in the house needs to be on and all the fans need to be off if I'm you know, doing a delayed um, or an HDR, which gives me um, five or three or five different images <clears throat> or exposures of the same image. So that fan blade has to be in the exact same place. But So Bobby, let's, let me stop you right there. And I want to go yeah. back uh, to the process itself. So you provide the realtors, you give me a, a list, a checklist. I give it to my sellers. Um, in the in the shoot in the shoot you're doing for me tomorrow, actually, I took the checklist. I went and sat down with Cindy, and we went over it. And she says, "Well, does Bobby have an eye for this?" I said, "Look, if you follow this checklist, we're going to be okay." So uh, we're looking forward to confirm through tomorrow. So thank you very much for that. But so tomorrow we're going to go into a house yeah. where the customer is going to be there. Can you talk a little bit about the safety precautions? that you take when you go in to photograph the house? Yes, I am masked and gloved. Um, I, I try not to touch anything that is not essential. Um, I have to touch light switches and doorknobs a lot of times. But I, if I go into a house and the bed's not made, I don't make it anymore. I don't, I don't fluff any pillows. I don't pick up any clothing. And that's because I don't want to bring anything into that app, that home that wasn't there. So I pretty much hang on to my camera, my tripod, and I stick to what I'm doing. It's kind of nice to have um, an empty house, but sometimes the owner or the owner needs to be there so that I can ask them to move things, and they don't seem to mind that at all. In fact, they welcome the fact that I am not touching anything. But I, I, I'll wear booties, too, sometimes, because I, I really do not want to share another property's germs with them. No, in this day and age, I mean, that's so important. I mean, the primary purpose is to keep ourselves safe, keep our sellers safe, and, of course, keeping our buyers safe. So I really applaud you for your efforts. Uh, we're learning all the time about new techniques to keep ourselves clean when we go in and, and access a house. Uh, I ended up going to my gym, uh, which I went to today, by the way. Uh, and when I walk into the door, he actually has a disinfectant pan on the floor for me to step into. And then he has like a, a rug for me to clean my feet or scrub my feet uh, and let them dry off, uh, which I think is something we're going to see more and more of. Uh, another thing I think we're going to see more of is, and you won't, you probably won't see this, but as we bring sellers, uh, as you bring buyers to our seller's properties, uh, at my gym, as an example, he uses a digital thermometer. He points it at my head and says, you're good to work out. So I've instructed my agents, for example, to use digital thermometers with the buyer's consent and make sure that they feel comfortable in going inside that house with the thermometer. Now, that's you're lucky you're not going to have to do that. But uh, it's just another precaution we try to take to keep everybody safe because this is an aggressive virus. This is a virus that we know that can be can, can be transmitted very, very easily. But let's not talk about the negative parts. Let's talk about the things you do and how you assist your realtors. How do you assist your realtors, Bobby? Well, like I said before, I'm on your team. I'm on your side. I want you to look good. I, I'm not going to photograph anything that is distracting uh, from, from the... Um, from the property. 
I also offer a lot of different services, um, which are um, HDRs, virtual tours, virtual staging, um, and drones, of course. You know, um, images are produced by various methods. Um, HDRs, drones, again, um, there are HDRs, which stands for high dynamic range. Uh, this gives you a clear lit interiors and a clear view out the windows uh, and the glass doors. And I think we've got a, a sample of this in a couple of slides. Um, pictures have never been more important than they are today. Um, now this here is an HDR that uh, you can see out the window, you can see what the view is going to be. Um, and I think there was another one that showed, I think, what um, realtors are doing with their cell phones. <laughs> and you don't get the same as you get with a professional, you know. Um, I've got some H. A, these are H, these are, this one here is for a, um, it, it's an HDR for one thing, and it has been um, virtually staged. And the house was vacant, but we, it's hard for some buyers to visualize how they're going to live in that space. So what we do is um, put furniture in it for them. We, That's a really cool service, I think, because like, I know when I am showing properties, um, the buyers really don't have any concept of spatial relationships. They don't remember how big their sofa is. Uh, they do remember if they have a king size or a queen size bed and they can actually take a measurement in the house. But when it comes to the living room space, my buyers have a lot of trouble. And I think the idea of doing the virtual staging so you can actually place furniture in the room is a fantastic idea. It, are, are, um, when you place furniture in the room like that, uh, is there a way to, me is there a measuring source you can uh, actually measure how big that room actually is? Uh, yes, there is. Um, we've got all kinds of technology for that. And we can let the, um, those prospective buyers know the size of the room and the size of the furniture in it. So that's kind of nice. Um, and sometimes people don't know where to put their dining rooms. They don't know if it's a part of the living room or part of the family room. We can designate those spaces by putting furniture in them to let them get a better feel of where they might fit. So I see Hugh McCurley is with us today. Hugh, you welcome to welcome. the show. And uh, his uh, comment was, hey, Bobby always makes me look good. Well, you know, Hugh always looks good no matter what. So I, Hugh makes us all feel good and makes us all look good. Welcome, Hugh. <laughs> what am I, what so am Bobby, I, listen. I, yeah, he's one of, he, I know he's one of your favorites. He's one of my favorites to do business with too. So Bobby, in addition to the HDRs, uh, let's, can we talk a little bit about the drone coverage and, and how the realtor can best utilize a drone? You've got some pretty good suggestions there, as I recall. Yeah, the drones have been around for quite a while. Um, but before them, I used to uh, use what I call a pixie pole. And I bought, had to buy a small camera because my big camera would just be, you know, rocking. So I, I bought this small camera, I run it up the pole, and I tried to take an overhead shot. Um, I even used a cherry picker one time. Um, I remember that cherry picker. <laughs> The guy was down the road and I said, would you just back it up a little so I could go up? And he was like, oh, I'm not sure about that. <laughs> um, I, I brought ladders and I put them on my tailgate. I tried to get everything. The drones have completely um, solved those issues. Uh, people who use drone photography on their listings can point out the proximity to the beach, shopping, downtown areas. Um, see, it, it says here property. You can see it's uh, close to the ocean. And this is down in Harbor Beach. Um, there's, uh, yeah, we always point out where the property is. And um, 
You can see where schools are, hospitals, um, possibly a highway that you may want as a convenience, and it may be a deterrent for some people. That's what I really love is, is that when you, when you place a school, a hospital, and a highway in relation on a map in relationship to the house or any body of water, hopefully the Atlantic Ocean, because I know you do a lot of those shots as well, the buyer can really understand a lot more about the neighborhood. And, and let's face it, in South Florida, we typically, pre-COVID, have a lot of traffic. And the traffic can create a lot of noise, and we don't always want to live close to the highway. I think that's a fantastic feature, Bobby. I personally like to live close to the highway. I'm I'm near the turnpike, and in five minutes, I'm going 85 miles an hour in any direction I want to go in. So that's convenient for me. But it's not always convenient if you've got you know small children you don't want on a busy road, you know. So. No, it certainly isn't. And and I really appreciate that you're doing the uh, HDR photos and also the drone photography. Um, we used to have what we call virtual tours, and I think we still do. Uh, can you talk about how they've evolved and, and, and what their purpose is today? Sure. I, in fact, I did one yesterday, and I'm doing one again this afternoon if it stops raining. Uh, virtual tours are different today than they than they were uh, in the um, late 90s or uh, not 90s early 20s it was a stationary um, process you get a tripod and you go around 360 degrees in each room so that would give you a full scope of what that room or the adjoining rooms look like um, and that is affordable for a lot of people. That has now been replaced with 3D 360s. Uh, it's a Matterport process. Everybody knows, most realtors know what Matterport's all about. But Matterport has extended its services so that it will accommodate its competitors' cameras on their platform, which is a really good thing because the photographers now get to choose um the cameras that they are either more comfortable with or are more affordable for them so we can go out and we can produce a 3d 360 rendering of a home at a, at a price that's affordable for the photographers therefore being more affordable for each realtor and that is the new up-and-coming technology I think actually COVID has really promoted that whole idea of the Matterport or the 360 degree camera. Uh, I think there's another one called i3. Maybe there's several others as well. But again, it, it kind of goes back to the safety issue, right? Uh, to be able to take a Matterport picture and it provides you a walkthrough where the camera is placed. And the thing I particularly like about it and, and, and the work that you've done for me is that when you can take that 360 camera and look up at the crown molding and see the detail on the crown molding and where it's the ceiling, and at the same time, bring it down to the floor, turn backwards around and see behind you, it's, it's, it's remarkable work, Bobby. I, I gotta give you a lot of credit. <laughs> it's fun. It, it's been a lot of fun uh, moving into the new technology. And, and we used to say things about the millenniums like, uh, oh, well, they don't know how to communicate with each other. Actually, they're ahead of us because we're catching up with the fact that there will be less physical contact. You'll spend that physical contact with your close friends, but for the public and uh, for your business clientele, we're going to be dealing much more remotely. And I think the better we are at it, the more friendly it will be to each other. You're absolutely right. And I, I think it's just a matter of time that uh, all these different technologies will tie us together. We already have the ability to do a Zoom meeting for a listing appointment. We can have we can do a uh, FaceTime with a walk through that to the house. Uh, we can talk about the contract on a Zoom meeting. Uh, we can schedule most activities uh, to try to limit our um, to limit any kind of problem with contagion with COVID and make sure the sellers feel comfortable and of course to make sure that we feel comfortable as well 
Uh, so the technology is certainly leaping ahead. Uh, Chitachi, who's my videographer, who's controlling this show today, we always joke, it's like, how do I keep up with this? There's so much going on. But, you know, we take it in little little pieces of, or bite pieces to make sure that we can kind of comprehend and learn as we go, because there is a lot out there and there's still a lot coming on. So uh, before I take you to the next question, I just got a text from your favorite realtor, Hugh McCurley. And he, he says, look, he goes, uh, I'm used to you telling me how to do things with my listings. And as a result, I've been very, very successful. So in return for that, for me accepting your boss, bossing me around and doing such a great job, I want to take you and Gary out to dinner. So I think we've got a dinner date coming up, Bobby. I like, I like that. Um, and I am a boss. For about 20 minutes, I just start barking orders. <laughs> Pick this up. I don't want that. I want to open this window, shut those slides, slides uh, you know, turn the fan off. And I go around. But I think people appreciate that. I try to be as friendly as I can. But I respect the realtor's time. So that's why I send that pre-check uh, list. But while in there, if I see something that's not going to be attractive or not going to be right, I want to help. Uh, that's my that's my job. And a lot of times, but Hugh is like, I go to his places and they are immaculate. They of are, course, of course. Uh, he's 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 always ahead of me on this stuff, and he always asks, "What do you need? What do you want?" And most of my realtors are like that. And those that aren't, you know, they get educated. <laughs> they get educated or they leave, right? <laughs> Well, I, That's the I, wonderful I, thing about our business. I do, I do not want to take up a lot of time um, of the realtor's time. I want to give them a good quality product, but I don't I, would, I don't want to rush by through it, but I want to be efficient. I also want the homeowners to be inconvenienced as little as possible. A lot of times we go into homes that are occupied by renters. They don't want you there at all. So um, I try to make my time minimal, but effective. And I, I want to get in, I want to get out, and I want to give you the best that I can possibly give you. you know? And you always do. And I really appreciate that about you. So so you really bring to the table this all this brand new technology. You do it so safely to protect yourself, protect our sellers, protect the realtors. I, I appreciate that. Um, another thing that you brought to the table, and I th think this is really fantastic and people need to know about it, is how, so how do we take a house that's got grandma's furnishings, right? It's got the, the wonderful valances with the, with the drapes and it's got shears underneath the drapes and it's got the multicolor big roses on the sofa that looks like on an early American traditional furniture. How can you help a realtor make that property look better through virtual staging. Okay, you're right. The estate properties that are listed are, um, are the most challenging because the kids come in, they take what they want, they leave what they don't. So we've got this rose colored plastic covered couch and I can take out all the furniture and replace it with new modern furniture. I can paint the walls and all this is done in virtual staging. Um, and it, this here is, is one of them. I don't know if shiitachi has got the next, next slide that shows. There we go. See, same room, but it, it just shows everything. You know, even that chair. Boy, that, that's really different. And that, that black chair in the other room. Um, when I shot from over by the door back this way, um, right, right. Those the two chairs there are in this exact same place. Um, wow, well, that's really fantastic! What a what a change of scenery! You know, taking that space and and modernizing it and making it look so current and contemporary. That's that's fantastic. Yeah, that was that was an empty um, house. But I can I can remove clutter, I can remove uh, the couches, I can take out um, carpet, I could put down 
flooring. Um, it, oh, you know, it can do pretty much everything except take walls out. But we can definitely dress it up so that people have an idea of what could be. And that's probably the most important um, feature of virtual staging. What and of course, doing things virtually, I think people can think about how do I put my things in this house and you've now decluttered the house so people can see the possibilities, right? Uh, as far as how that space really might look with my contemporary right. artwork, Andy Warhol or whatever, uh, on the walls. Did you bring a picture with you that uh, that takes a look at grandma's house and the way it was uh, uh, currently uh, furnished versus the way that you had stylized it with some uh, virtual staging? Yes, I do have some of those in the virtual staging file that I sent to Tatachi, um, where we might be able to see some of that. I know she's uh, scrambling. <laughs> Okay, yeah, um, this was older furniture and the next slide should show you the new furniture. But I, we had to take all of that out. Yeah, there you go. We had to take all that other stuff out of there. And then I think there's another one of a living room. That's fantastic. fantastic. Yeah, it's fun. It's so much fun to do this. Because so how much artistry goes into this, right? Right. I get to pick the style, whether it be Scandinavian or modern or industrial. Yeah, that's the same room. Empty, you know. It's it's a lot. I love all this new technology, and I'm telling you, the things that are going to come out of the COVID requirements of distancing and all the new technology that's happening. I'm looking forward to every new day that, and every new thing that's coming up. It's going to be a lot of fun. I'm ready. I'm ready for this. Well, you're certainly taking advantage of it. I think that's a, a credit to you personally. Uh, you are one that continues to learn, learn the new technology, make sure your realtors know about it, and let your realtors pick and choose which pieces of those technology that they really want to use to sell a house. So. I mean, kudos to you. I mean, I've used you for 15 years. I know your talent, uh, but I know there are a lot of people watching this show who may not have done business with you yet. Maybe you could share with them uh, what makes you different and why realtors should do business with you. They should do business with me because I love them and I will always put myself into each and every image that I shoot. Um, I, I, again, I'm on your side. I, I I don't have an ego in this. If you want me to stand on my head and shoot underneath the bed, I will do that. Uh, I will present you with a picture and you probably will not take it. But I've been in this business for 16 years now. And um, I've also been a realtor. I understand the real estate business. I understand that time is, is essential for realtors. I'll, you guys get a listing agreement. Um, you present the listing agreement to your clients. It sits on their coffee table for you know, six weeks. They interview everybody. They decide it's you. As soon as they sign that listing agreement, it's bam, the um, blast furnace of activity happens. That means that I've got to get out there probably within 48 hours to take those pictures because now they're ready to go. They want everything done. And I always try to make as much effort as I can to get there as soon as I can because it, it makes you look good. It makes the homeowner um, easy. You know, it eases the homeowner so that they know that they made the right decision by picking you as a realtor. I'm, I'm, your, I'm part of your marketing team. I'm ready to go when you're ready to go. Um, my turnaround time about 24 hours, sometimes a little longer if, if they're, they're specialty photos. But I understand that you should, you should be with me because I care about what I do and I care about how, what you do and, and how you look. And, and I, I really appreciate that because uh, when, when, I go, when, I, when I go into a listing and, and 
I'm there or one of my agents is always there with you. The thing that I love about you, I mean, there's so many things I love about you, but one of the things I love about you is your ability to chit chat with the seller about their cat, their dog, uh, the linens on their bed, uh, the things in the kitchen. You, you just have a way of putting these customers at ease. And that's, that's a gift. That's a gift. That's a gift that people in the service industry sometimes overlook because we are in the relationship business. And as a relationship selling business, we have to have those kind of relationships so we can continue to do excellent business. Bobby, I can't tell you how much I've enjoyed this today. Um, you've done such a great job. Uh, which is, is, is there anything else you want to share with us before we close it down? I just want to say that when I go into somebody's house, I have a limited amount of time to make a difference. People are moving for a lot of different reasons and not all of them are good. They've lost a spouse. They have to go into assisted living. They're going to go live with uh, relatives that they haven't really known for a while. They're nervous. They're, they're, they're anxious about what's going to happen. I go in there. I try to be the best I can be for their life. Maybe I'm the only person they see all week other than their realtor. You know, it just makes a difference of how you approach life. You approach your business the same way. And that is with compassion and a purpose. And I am so happy to be in this business. I love the real estate business. I love realtors. And Gary, I love you for having me on your show. Thank you so much. It's been such a pleasure, Bobby. And thank you for joining us today. Uh, before we sign off, I want to just give my audience uh, a heads up. We're going to talk about mortgages again next week with Don Rubin. Uh, there have been some updates. There have been some changes in the way mortgages are approved and done right now. And I'm looking forward to bringing you those updates. So, Bobby, again, thank you for being here with us today. Uh, I, 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 I'm, I'm so looking forward to when we can get out of this quarantine situation where we can sit down eyeball to eyeball, six feet across from a table and have some dinner together. Yeah, and, and we'll do it with uh, Hugh McCurley. <laughs> and we'll do it with Hugh McCurley. So without any further ado, I, my name is Gary Lanham. Thank you for joining Bobby Smith and Chitachi Egwu and me today on Tuesdays with Gary. And we will say goodbye for now. See you next Tuesday.